what is the ultimate podcast? What would you say? What is the ultimate podca podcast? Is having someone who's created something in the podcast space. We've got it today. I'm Carmela. Welcome in. My guest today is Alex San Filippo, who created Podmatch. He is a podcaster. He even has the big juicy mic in front of him. I love your set and I love you. And there's so much to tell why. Welcome into Under the Spotlight. Thanks for joining me today, Alex. Carmela, thank you so much for having me. And uh, hey, the love is mutual. The first time we had a conversation was through Facebook Messenger. And right. we both have many people that like to use the voice feature. So we're actually sending each other audio messages. And that's just so rare. Most people are like, please don't send me another audio message. I'm like, okay, I'll stop. But you were fully embraced it, sent them back. And so we have a great connection. And it's truly an honor to be here with you today. Oh, my, I, I'm, I'm honored to have you here. This man has invented something, a platform that allows us to connect but have you recently found that podcasts, ladies and gentlemen, are like a thing and now they're a video thing? I mean, this this world is growing. When did you start in the podcast world, though, Alex? How far back do you go? I, I go back to two. I had a failed attempt, if we can count that. So like 2014, I think I just tried it and didn't enjoy it back then. The tools were it, it was over my ability to understand how the Internet worked. Let's put it that way. But I, I did okay. really well in 2018. And that's when I consider myself to have really started and and actually fell in love with podcasting and built something out of it when you in 2014 though what was your your vision for yourself did you have something to say uh is your gift your voice and you wanted to use it why did you land in that space back then if you don't mind just a couple of questions for you yeah of course so i i was speaking at WordPress events. They're called WordCamps. Or if you're my wife, you call them nerd camps. So um, I was going <laughs> to all these events and there were so many questions around blogging that people had at that time. So there was a lot of developers would go to these events, but they would openly admit, hey, I'm not great at content. And so I would go speak, but there were so many follow-up questions. I just started doing a little podcast that would be the common questions that I would get. My quality wasn't good. I ran out of content really fast, but it was an interesting thing to jump into. And people that I meet at the event said, hey, I listened to your podcast episode about how to create a better title. And so it, it did serve its purpose for a temporary uh, amount of time. But uh, I, I believe in consistency and sticking with it in podcasting. And I did not do that the first time around. All right. So while we hang here, that is uh, that is kind of a hiccup for a lot of people. Like for us, it's every Thursday at 11 central or noon or our specific day and, and time. We run a series of, of podcasts and we've been doing this for many, 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 many months. We know the commitment to that. People tend to not continue, right? Is there something that happens that helps people continue or is it truly just a mindset of, oh, well, I'm not doing well. I shouldn't continue. Like that question on the heels of what did you do from the first attempt to the second? Yeah, at first it really comes down to why. Uh, and so start with why is something that I like to say. And I know Simon Sinek kind of stole that as a book title, but like the truth is starting with why is so important. And I find the difference between podcasters that make it and the ones that fail are simply having an actual purpose and reason that's tangible for doing it. When I started, it was just to answer some questions and sure that's a little bit of a why, but there was no deep meaning behind it. If I probably would have sat down and said, I want to serve the developers in WordPress that are trying to build a business but can't really produce content for their clients, understand how to do that so they can succeed long-term and feed their family, right? If I would have built out a why that was more tangible like that versus just answering people's questions, I probably would have been able to stick with it a lot longer because I'd actually have something to tie the pain to, right? Because mm -hmm. the, the truth is people don't really hate pain if there's a reason for it. People that decide they want to mm -hmm. lose weight or get in shape, they're willing to sweat mm -hmm. every day and work really hard because the end goal is I want to take mm -hmm. care of myself long-term. That's and I find it to be the same in podcasting. People are just don't really have a rhyme or reason for doing it. it makes it really easy to stop. And, and unfortunately, I pulled the stats before this guy wanted to see it. Right now, if you start a podcast, your chances of making it to one year are under 13%. It's around 12.5% chance of making it a full wow. year. And when I talk to people, it's typically they can't really articulate why they're doing it in the first place. It looked like fun. They want to make money. They want to get rich or famous, right? And those are all great things, I suppose. But it's not the best or fastest medium for doing that. There needs to be something bigger that you tie it to if you really want to make it, I find. Mm -hmm. You have to have a reason. They do morph, though. Your podcasts do morph. Oh, yes. Maybe even the title or the feeling or the flavor or the style. Uh, it does sort of morph. Do I just go with that along the way? What's your advice on how the podcast sort of reinvents itself or metamorphs into something else? 
that happened with my show. So my show that did really well initially was called Creating a Brand. And it was the art of creating yeah. a brand for yourself, be, cool. leaving corporate, becoming an entrepreneur. It was that type of journey. And while I was on that journey, that was a great podcast for me to be interviewing people on because I was so curious for myself. And as I always said, I'm bringing people with me as we're working to build something for ourselves. After I did that, which just happened to be in the lane of podcasting, right? Now I'm a full-time entrepreneur, if you will, and founder. That my message changed. And I found very quickly that who I was serving through listeners, they were changing as well. They were becoming podcasters or they were podcasters. And that point, I shifted my podcast from what was called creating a brand to being called podcasting made simple. And now it's about improving as a podcast guest or podcast host. And at first I saw a two third dip and that was the commitment that I had to make. But now here I am two years later, I believe it's about two years later from that decision. My podcast is 20 times the size it was originally. And it's not going to be podcasting made simple forever. It's all about that journey. And I think that if you want to be, if you want to be the right host for listeners, you're not always the same person. We're transforming, we're changing, we're on a journey. And we really want to bring people where we're at on the journey, right? We want them to be part of it Absolutely. today. Mm -hmm. So for some of us who love to, to do this, this was a, a really a, an answered prayer for me to be able to shine the spotlight on this magnificent man. And I say that because he's, he's family and he not only family first, but taking care of all of us who have needs in this space. He's very well known in this space. He is really iconic in this space because you created a tool that is the missing piece for so many of us who love being podcasters to be guests on other podcasters shows. You created pod, podmatch.com. That's mind blowing. You actually put together a place for all of us to go to sync up with our community with like minds. Alex is brilliant. Thank you. I appreciate it. I got to give credit to my wife for the name. I, I'm not the most creative name person, but she said pod match. And the second I heard I'm like, that's, that's the name. It's exactly what it is. Right. So yeah, I'll yes. give her credit for the name and, and pass that the, uh, yeah, the idea just kind of, kind of happened. And, uh, um, it, it's, it's been a really great journey for sure. Who can go there? What, what do we need to do? Like next steps? I need to be a podcaster to be on pod match. Yes. Or, or a guest. So I'll give the, the thousand foot view of it, if you will. So Podmatch is a software that automatically connects podcast guests and podcast hosts together for interviews. And the way I like to say is it works just like a dating app. Although I've been married too long to be on a dating app, I'm told it works just like a dating app. But instead of connecting you for dates, it connects you for podcast interviews. So if you want to talk about, you could talk about a lot of things, Carmela. You're like extremely talented. I've been listening to your show as a matter of oh, fact, good. quick shout out. I got to do a side note here. Sorry, everybody. I'm derailing the conversation. I don't mean to. I listened to a conversation with someone who I thought I'd have nothing in common with, but you had Mary Beth Rowe on the podcast. And I'll tell you what, like I was, I was like, I'm going to listen to this podcast. I'm going to be on it. I'm going to start listening. I've listened to some other episodes as well, but that one, I was like, man, she loves to train and teach. And that's what I love to do. She has a passion to love and serve people. For me, my faith is everything in my life. So I like listen to the way you interviewed her. I'm like, this is something I would never know about Mary Beth Rowe, other than that she's like the QVC queen, right? Like that's all I would have known about her, but I had no idea that her and I, like after listening to the way you talked to her and the way she answered, I could be friends with her. Anyway, um, you did such a great job on that interview, by the way. Thank you. That means the, that means the world coming from you. And all I really did was let her speak. What an amazing woman, right? And how bold is she with her, her faith? That's what she did for me. It was like, wow, okay, she's really bold about her faith and I'm not, why not? She made me think, right? She was just taking us for a tour, just being herself. I think that makes for a great guest, right? So like you, just, just being, just being yourself. Do you have any other tips that help us make our decision as to what podcasts to listen to as listeners? Like I've noticed, Alex, maybe you can walk us through this better. Like you watch that because you were going to be here. You're sort of doing your due diligence or homework to see the show flow because you're coming on as, as a guest, but someone that happens on the Mary Beth row or other spot uh, spotlight or other podcasts, how do they even get there? I'm noticing that people who listen to podcasts often make their referral as the one to watch. Right. But there may be others that we're missing that may have that inspiration that we didn't expect. So, as a consumer, how am I deciding which podcast is something I'm plugging in or is it really the title? Alex, to you. Yeah, it's um, 
This is a very insightful question, by the way, Carmela. I'm, I'm excited to, to go here because very few people ask this because they just assume that I'm sharing it on social media so people are going to find it. And th that's great. That's something that I do think you should do. But the top three ways people discover podcasts. So me, let's imagine I'm a listener. The way I'm going to find podcasts is first and foremost, I'm going to do a search for it. That's the number one way. Searches through search engines like Google and Bing, uh, but also more recently, the actual podcast player apps. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, Google Podcasts, all those places. And that didn't used to be the case because the search was, here's the thing, if I, if I typed in your first and last name, it might not even find it like three years ago because that wasn't the name of the podcast, right? I guess well, it is in there. So maybe yours is not, not a good example. You typed in Alex Sanfilippo, you're not going to find podcasting made simple because my name wasn't actually in it. Now, if you type it in, it'll show you not only all the podcasts I've been a guest on, but also my show itself. The search inside of these apps is getting so intelligent that you want to actually capitalize on that. So titling your episodes and writing a description doesn't have to be long, but writing a little bit about it so when people search for that topic, they can find it. Because we're finding that a lot more people are no longer looking just for podcasts. They're looking for specific topics now. So they're saying, you know what? I want to learn more about Mary Beth Rowe, because she's the QVC queen, right? Like, I want, I want to hear more about it. They're going to type in that name. So if that name isn't in the title or is in the description, it's going to be a lot harder for these apps to be able to figure out that that's who Carmela interviewed on a specific episode. But by putting in, especially when it comes to someone who's a little bit more famous, if you will, right? Putting in their name is important. But sometimes, even someone like me, my name is hard to spell. If you titled it something along the lines of how podcast hosts get podcast listeners. People might be searching for that. And that's not a great example. But in general, the first thing I think about is capitalizing on the search. Uh, the number two, and I'll, I'll be quicker on these next two. Number two is, is word of mouth. Friends, friends mouth. introduce podcasts. If they like it, if they think it was really good, they share it. And so it's all about making podcasts more shareable for people. It is a really important thing to do. People are going to open up the app of their choice, right? But make sure your cover art is nice which is the little emblem that goes with your podcast. Because some people, I, I know some good podcasts I like, and I always have to apologize when I share it for the weird cover art. And I'm not trying to be rude or mean, but I'm like, they used MS Paint, right? Microsoft Paint. And they just like wrote their name on it or scribble a cartoon. I'm like, hey, sorry, it's a really good podcast. Just don't look at the picture on it, right? But if it's easy to share and you feel proud of it, more people right. are more likely to spread the word and share it. Okay, wait, I need a halt there, though. Everybody listening in that goes, someday I want to have my own podcast, but I don't know if I could come up with that great art for my cover. It's okay to start messy, right? Like, just begin. Just Absolutely. start it. it does. Nothing beats just starting where you're at. You, if, if you wait till you're perfect, you are never going to launch your podcast. And right, I know exactly. some people who I've been attempting to help for years, and they're years into the idea of their podcast. Guess how many people that idea is serving? Zero. Not what, one. What? Until you launch, it's not helping anybody. Oh, I see what you're saying. They haven't launched it. They have the concept, but they haven't launched it yet. They're waiting till it's perfect. And unfortunately, what? you and I both know it's not going to get there, is it? No, because if you wait till it's perfect, it's going to change. It'll keep changing. It's like an artist who doesn't never finishes a painting because they keep changing the concept. Right. There's more in it. Just get another piece of, of, of canvas. Dang, wow, that's kind of mind blowing. Yes, because there are a lot of people. People are inspiring. And I had a guest today who said, I would like to say yes, but I don't know if I'm inspiring or not. I love her Italian accent. And I'm like, she doesn't think she's inspiring, but as soon as she speaks, everybody feels it, right? There's something yeah. there, her travel, the experience, her work. She had great, great tips. So everybody has something, uh, something to give. Uh, so you're married, your wife puts up with you and all of your <laughs> Stuff, she works in the business she, as well. She's one of the co-founders. So she doesn't just, I mean, put it on her, who knows? That's a good thing. I'd love to interview her sometime. Um, but this world for the two of you, and I'm kind of giving you a tough time, but uh, friendly, but you guys live in this world that is growing by leaps and bounds. This podcast world, there are conventions, the pod match, you're, you're founder of that. Uh, lots of your friends and buddies are now coaches. I mean, it's growing exponentially it's kind of a phenomenon and from my perspective love to hear from you this isn't new to you you've been around a long time but doesn't it seem like it's a big deal now all of a sudden everybody's listening to podcasts yeah it, it's an interesting time I'll, I'll never forget it Carmelo I think it was maybe a year ago or two years ago but I, I was walking through our living room it was after work hours and Alicia was watching a tv show and they referenced a podcast on the tv show and I was like what I'm like what is that and she's like this show is actually based on 
a TV show or on a podcast. I think it was called Only Murder Murders in the Building or something like that. Um, oh, wow. I, I never seen it or anything like that. But I was like, there's a TV show based on a podcast. I was like, that's going to do really well for us. And sure enough, now there's a it's it's becoming a regular thing that's mentioned on movies. Uh, it's mentioned on, on TV, right? Like people actually just in in passing. Five years ago. <laughs> If someone mentioned a podcast, they'd have to give a disclaimer as to what a podcast is, why exactly. you shouldn't listen, right? Because that was kind yes. of how the world was. So it's changed a lot. And people always ask me, Alex, is it a good time to get into podcasting as a guest or host? And I, I and people are like, and how do you know? I only track one metric, listenership. If listenership is climbing, then it's a healthy industry. Because as long as there's more listeners coming into it, it means there's more opportunity to, to influence and impact lives in a positive way. You have to have, I mean, you and your wife have to have passion about what you're talking about and you do and you have knowledge and skills and now years of experience. But someone knew, do I have to have my topic out of the gate? Do I have to have a niche or can I just go out and say, I know I have some valuable information here. Like we were talking about a moment ago, just start. What's your guidance on that as far as having the niche or just letting it go organically? Alex? I really like starting with some form of niche. Like it, it doesn't need to be super dialed in. Again, don't wait for perfection. At the end of the day, it's not serving anybody when it's not launched, right? When they can't find it, it's not going to help them. So at the end of the day, start with that. And actually, you had somebody on your podcast. Uh, I'm blanking on his last name. It was Kevin Malat. Malat. Is that Malat? Okay, so Love it was on. One. Yeah, five. It was on five eighteen two thousand twenty three. If anyone wants to go back and listen, this it was a great conversation. But talking about being a leader for your community and fighting for them. And I think that that's a great perspective to have as you're launching a podcast. Think about the people in your life that you know you have influence with, that you know you serve. And maybe don't niche down super far initially, but think about those people as you're launching versus saying, this is for the whole world. No, no, fight for your community. Fight for the people that you know that you lead and have influence with. And when you do that, it'll help you be able to, to hone it in a little bit as you go. But yes, at the end of the day, get it out there first and foremost, right? Because it, again, it's not serving anyone without starting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Now, if I don't ask this, a lot of your viewers and mine might be a little uh, ticked monetization. I don't start my podcast to monetize. I grow it with the potential to monetize. Agree or disagree? Yeah. Agree completely. You, agree? you want me to elaborate a little bit on that? Yes. If you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, so one Free of the advice here now. Yeah, well, one of the um one of the leading causes of failure are people getting into podcasting saying I'm going to get rich doing this. And from day 1, their only perspective and mindset is I'm going to make a lot of money with this. The truth is podcasting is not even close to the best way or a good way to make money. And I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. You can, but it's better if you already have a pre-existing product or service or offering that you're going to provide versus just saying I'm going to grow it so much to do advertisements because that's typically what I hear. Uh, people tell me, hey, Alex, I want to quit my full-time job and just podcast full-time. I'm like, great. How do you think you're going to do that? Through advertisements. And yeah. there are not many podcasts that get a lot of listenership. And that's just the nature of it. Um, there, there's a lot of stats out there that show, I, I can't remember what it is, but very over, I think it's over 90% of podcast listeners all listen to the same 10 shows. So 10 uh, out, of, uh, out of all of them, right? And so in order to actually monetize from just doing advertisements, it's a lot of work. So again, I don't recommend that, but if you have a product service or something you're offering, that's great. If you don't, the best way to do it is like I said, start something for your community that you serve and then talk to as many listeners as you can, find out how you can continue to improve for them, but also ask them, what is it that you're struggling with? And then after a while, if you collect that as data, you can learn what, what it is you need to offer. And that's actually exactly how I launched PodMatch, like to bring it full circle. I launched by simply asking the people that were trusting me with their time, with their ears, right? Listening to my podcast, what they were struggling with. And I consistently heard it was along the lines of podcasting. So I didn't have a product or service. And so for years, I didn't monetize at all. But then when I did, it was already primed and ready to be that vehicle to, to be top of the funnel, to be my marketing, to be mm -hmm. my salesperson for me, more or less. So right. I, I think that starting with the idea, the best way to start a podcast is to start it as a hobby. You're not trying to make money with it. You're just doing something that you're passionate about. You're serving others. And eventually, you'll notice a door opens where you're like, okay, there's a chance now to make this a business, but the longer you keep it a hobby, the better your chances of making it to that are. That right there is everything. That's everything from a man who's had experience, failure into success, 
teaching and showing others as well. A time where, you know, coaching is, is a premium online, but someone who has what Alex has is not easy to just find. And you give it away free on your, your podcast and your conventions. Hey, Alex, anything coming up that we want to talk about? Do you have any conventions coming up or special podcasts? Or I, I also love um, how you tell us about your the month of the speakers coming up. I love that. Definitely following you on all of the speakers. Yeah, thank you. I, well, I appreciate that. You know, I, I have I have one question for you, if that's okay, and I'll I'll keep it brief, if that's sure. all right. So one of the issues we see in podcasting is that not all podcasts are good, and I don't say it to be rude or mean, but you're a really good interviewer, you're a good conversationalist, but not everyone has that skill. How did you hone that? Has it been since you launched your podcast? Given some of your background, I imagine it came from before, uh, right? But it's one of those things. What would you, what advice would you give to someone who's like, oh, I want to do this, who maybe has no experience as a speaker? How can they start doing that to make sure when it launches, it's actually listen worthy. And again, I, I don't say it to be mean. That's just one of the biggest problems we have in podcasting. People are like, it's not growing. I'm like, but you're, you're not necessarily, you haven't put any time into the craft of being a good host. Under the spotlight is incredible. Again, that conversation I referenced with Mary Beth Rowe and Kevin uh, Malott, like incredible, like great conversation. How can someone get good at that? Wow, I think well, it, it does have a story, but in uh, in a nutshell, it, it should be about the person that's your guest. They are the expert. Don't try and be the expert. Point to them. Even if I know the answer, point to them and let them speak. They'll have a perspective that has more depth because it's their expertise. Don't try and catch up and be lateral. And I know about all that. Oh, yeah, I do too. It's, you know, really shine the spotlight on them. Do it to let them be the expert. And part two is what would my audience want to know that they don't know now that our guests can share with them? What's That's the question to ask hmm. so that your audience gets something new, fresh, or a tip or something they wouldn't have even thought to ask. And they're like, well, there's aha moments like you had. So it is really about Y-O-U. It's about you. It's about the viewer and uh, the guest and the focus off of me as the host. I hope that helped. It's a good oh, answer. Yeah. No, for sure. And I hope that someone who's checking this out, who's like, oh, I want to do this podcasting thing. I hope they really take that to heart because I, we immediately put all the pressure on ourselves and say, okay, it's my show. It's about me. It's about me. But Carmela, it's about the person in the other seat. And the more you can honor that person, the more your audience wants to honor you. And I, I think you wrap that up beautifully. And I, obviously there's way more to it, but you did that in a way that I think can set somebody above the standard of what we see. So thank you for that. Everyone has something great to give, right? People are so interesting. So yeah, just go go have some fun. Go have a conversation uh, like we did here today. So what's happening next in the podcast world as we let you go here? I know your time is precious and you have lots going on. Do you have any um, kind of inside tips or hints or things that are happening that are kind of becoming hot that we want to get on the trail right now besides uh, PodMatch, which I, I need to solidify that today? I think I've gone up to sign up a number of times. I actually, I'll tell you honestly, Alex, I haven't made the transition in my mind of being a guest because I like being on this side as opposed to being a guest, but I think it would behoove me. Would it, would it actually well, help being a yeah. guest if you're a host? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's one of the, again, people, people listen to podcasts based off recommendations, right? And who better recommend a podcast than a host? Because the people listening to podcasts, just one fact about them, they listen to podcasts. Uh, and also you just shared some real advice, by the way, some really good, you clearly know what to do on either side of the mic. Cause I asked you a question. You did very well with answering it. Thank you. That's very, I hadn't thought about it like that. Okay. We're getting a lot of free advice here today. Yeah. And you actually know you, you don't coach, but you coach, you coach gifting us everything, right? We don't have one-on-one -on -one coaching or is that an option with you? No, I, I don't really. Uh, that's just not my lane. Uh, I enjoy that just where I'm at right now. I'm more, I more so focus on being a guest on podcast or, or doing webinars or hosting virtual events, right? I'm really focused on, on, on working towards serving my, my entire community, which isn't massive or anything like that. But that's really what I'm focused on versus the one on one. I miss it. I love it. One day, maybe I'll get back to it. But right now, it's, uh, it's the wrong time for it. So this is, this is what I'm doing. And, and to go back to your question real quick, Carmelo, to the future of podcasting, listenership is growing at a more rapid rate than ever before. As a matter of fact, listenership, like amount of time listened just past Netflix. So there's more time spent listening to podcasts than watching Netflix, which is, I think, a big turning point for, for the world and maybe a good thing because uh, this is, tends to be more educational based. Uh, so outside of that growing, we're seeing more and more tools come into podcasting, which is exciting because it makes the whole thing more frictionless. And that's beautiful because a lot of people, they, what 
sets them at, like keeps them away from is like what caused me to stop years ago when we were sharing that earlier was the fact that it was just too much to do. And now it's being made a lot easier and the accessibility of who it can reach is, is growing. It's the best time we've ever had to be in podcasting. So, I mean, it's kind of a broad way to answer it, but I'm very excited about the future of podcasting because it's looking very, very promising, especially if you consistently release episodes. If you can stick with it, you're going to do really well. See, stick with it, everybody. It's exactly what we need to do. I want to say thank you to you, Alex, uh, for all that you brought to the table today, the podcast tips, the inspiration, and the inspired uh, inspiration to, to start and keep going and keep that why right in front of you. What is the reason for doing this? I mean, I look at Alex and think to myself, wow, his reason for doing this was filling in a void and he's doing that for all of us. And I want to say thank you to you and your, and your lovely wife for all you do for this community of uh, podcasters. And thank you for the time today. Yeah, Carmelo, thank you for putting me under the spotlight. I so, so appreciate you and love what you're doing here. Thank you. We'll keep it going. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to Alex and thank you to our viewers. We'll see you next time under the spotlight. Take his advice and treat yourself and get out there and maybe inspire someone. Even just one person can make a huge difference and have fun with it along the way. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, viewers. See you next time.